Matt Aguilar here from comicbook.com. And today I have the pleasure of speaking to Captain Marvel, Black Cloak, and now Birds of Prey writer Kelly Thompson. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. I've had a really good week. <laughs> so I'm good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, you're not kidding. Uh, you know, the the internet's have been a buzz uh, with all the the fun stuff you're doing uh, with Birds of Prey. And you've got so much going on because even in, you know, Black Cloak, we we get a, a look and a, and a taste of your new series. Uh, yeah. Cole. So you're just like busier, busier than ever. It feels like, I mean, is it, you know, we're going to touch on obviously Captain Marvel kind of ending that run. Uh, but it seems like you've got more than enough uh, things on your plate to kind of keep you busy. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's one of the things with comics that's so weird. It's like you you work on something for months and months and months and you can't talk about it. And everyone's like, what's your next thing? And you're like, oh, I can't talk about it. And it's such an unsatisfying answer. But it really is true that you have to, like, hold these things back. And then, you know, sometimes it happens like mine is sort of happening right now where you go for months where it seems like you're not doing anything and you feel like <laughs> people are forgetting you exist or whatever and then all of a sudden all your crap happens at the same time so I mean I was actually really happy it was just coincidental you know with the birds of prey announcement you know um the team is a little unusual and we knew that and we also knew that you know a lot of the charm and enjoyment in a first issue that's an ensemble team especially if it's a new team is sort of seeing it be brought together and so right. you know we have those kind of beats in our first issue it's a little oversized it's 25 pages um and so we have that stuff in there but like you know you have to have other surprises in that issue because the cover 99 percent of the time reveals who that you know so you can't <laughs> yeah. you can't play that out like oh what a surprise zealots involved you know no you can't do that so we knew that we were going to be blown the second solicits went out and so i was like well let's make a thing of it like let's do a social media like release of like laying out all the characters and you know and we knew um i was really excited by how excited everyone was it was so much love and excitement and positivity with like dinah and Cass, and i knew like as we got uh, toward the end of the week and Oracle both hadn't been revealed or wasn't going to be revealed. And there was going to be zealots, probably the biggest surprise in that listing. And then Harley is definitely the most divisive. Like she's sort of got the most fans, but she also has the most haters. So like I knew we were headed for falling off the cliff. And so the all week I was just like, <laughs> just hold on to this energy, this positively, just ride it right on through the weekend, girl. So yeah. It was uh, it was a good time. We got a lot of engagement, which, you know, I don't like it when people come for me or they yell at me or they be short sighted or my least favorite thing ever is when people try to armchair quarterback on my choices for a story they don't know yet. Like, I understand <laughs> that you're upset, but you can't see what the plot is like. You don't know why any of these characters make sense yet. And, and that's fine. But like, there's nothing wrong with just saying we don't know yet. Like, you don't have to have an opinion yet. <laughs> it's not required. Anyway, people have a lot of feelings about Birds of Prey. And so do I. And I don't begrudge them that. I get it. I, I went in knowing that I thought I could make something really cool, especially once I knew that Leo and Jordy were going to do it with me. I felt like we really have a chance to make something awesome here to build on everything Gail, you know, I mean, I know Chuck created it, Chuck Dixon created it and mad respect for what he did there. But I do think that the sort of rampant fans of today are more the Gail Simone fans and rightly so. Like she yeah, really I built agree. it into something. She took what Chuck had built, which was beautiful and turned it into something really special. And, you know, I never want to, trample on anything anyone has done or the things that are important to fans so i only came into it with love but i did know it would be divisive especially with some of the first plotting things we were doing so um but i honestly all i could ask is that people who are interested in birds of prey read the first issue if we don't convince you in the first issue you have my blessing you have my blessing to be mad you have my <laughs> blessing to move on i feel very confident about that first issue um someone was talking to me about it on Twitter and they were like, I don't know about this Harley thing. And I put up a GIF that was basically like uh, from um, 
it was a girl being like, I'm, I'm very confident. I'm very confident about all this. And I just like, I just, that's how I feel. It's like a really cool book. Like I, I get that it's not going to be for every single person. Some people aren't going to yeah. like what Leo does, or some people just can't bear Harley in any circumstances, or some people are ride or die for Barbara. And if she's not there from page one, then it doesn't work for them. And that's okay. That's okay. It's impossible to make comics for every single person that every right. single person is going to like, but I do think we're making something really cool that has very much the energy and spirit and everything that people who love birds of prey are looking for. I mean, I guess the only thing I'd argue is if you're looking for super like cheesecakey stuff, which, you know, that was a big, that has depending on the years been a big part of birds of prey mm -hmm. and Leo's style is not really that style. So so yeah, if you're looking for like super sexy cheesecakey insides, then yes, we're probably not the book for you. But other than that, I just think we're doing cool stuff with fun characters. It's a real a real love letter to comics and what they can do. Yeah, I talk, no, and I, I talked no, so much. I'm so no, sorry. <laughs> no, it was wonderful. And and look, as a I mean, a lot of that is is music to my ears, right? I'm a I was a huge I I knew of the Birds of Prey and I read them before but yeah when gail took over yeah that's when i really became a fan of yeah. the team and and those characters and i will you know it's you know everyone has their own dream you know group right or the group that you know they first started with and, and me it's always yeah you know, barbara and helena and dinah right yeah but yeah i Part of the magic, though, over the years has been seeing the different lineups. And there have been times where none yeah. of, like, almost none of those kids. Dinah seems to be the one constant. Um, but for the most part, like, those characters all interchange. And I've still yeah. enjoyed the book and found it. I feel like it always brings a new energy. So, I mean, yeah. look, you had me at Barda. <laughs> <laughs> I love that character so much. Barda's so awesome. Um, I'm and, glad. Uh, I'm glad. I, I don't know if, you know, my editor on this is Ben Abernathy. Uh, he's been incredible. He's very fun and supportive. Um, he, he, you know, I, I'm sure there are people above him who decide in part, you know, what gets greenlit and what gets not greenlit. But, you know, I, I sort of joked before I was talking about what this pitch was, like that it was Birds of Prey. I sort of joked that I pitched a thing to DC with just all my favorite characters in it. And then I never really expected them to say yes. And then they were like, okay, let's do this. And I was like, wait, what? Okay. Okay, great. But um, so I didn't know how Ben felt about any of the individual characters. Um, and I, I guess I still don't really know, but after the first issue, he was like, I love the way you write Barda. And I took it to sort of mean like he wasn't completely convinced that <laughs> that, that that I was going to pull that off, but like that he's, he is into it now. And I took a lot of pleasure in that. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Barda. I love sort of big muscular ladies um, being, being tough. I like it even better when they're fish out of water Barda who like, you know, has she been in 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 the United States, let alone planet Earth, long enough to learn everything by now? Probably. Is it more fun if she still says weird words and thinks we're a little strange? Yes. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I lean into that. Uh, she and Cass are definitely um, sort of magical together already on the page. Like, you know, they're just they're just really fun. I, all the characters are really fun. They make a lot of sense for the storyline. And then, you know. I don't I don't like I don't like saying this because I, it just sounds like I'm so in the tank for him but I am Leo is so underrated in comics it's insane he is such a masterful storyteller uh, I think page four and five of issue one are a double page spread one of these sort of fight double page spreads that I've sort of gotten known for I think probably with Elena and I doing it on Black Widow that's when it got the most notice yeah but i started doing it with leo on hawkeye years and years ago we started that together and so coming back together and doing that stuff again but hopefully i've leveled up i don't know that's too that's too close to for me to be able to say but leo for sure has even though i thought he was a genius then what is he a double genius now i don't know like he just <laughs> his storytelling choices the way he frames a story he's really playing with I don't want to give it away or overhype, but he sent me 
he sent Ben and I some notes about issue one and how he was sort of thinking about the individual characters fighting styles and all this stuff. And first of all, he sent 25 pages of gorgeous layouts that I think Ben and I had one note on, which (laughs) I I don't know. I don't know how to tell you how (laughs) incredible that is, but you're getting something right. If your editor and writer are like, um, on this one page, uh, she's facing the wrong way. But other than that, every (laughs) single thing is perfect. It was incredible. But he also, when he sent those, he also sent these incredibly detailed, thoughtful notes that were some of the most thoughtful artist notes I've ever gotten. Honestly, I just, it was really incredible. So it's fun. It's fun to see people love comics and care about them like you do, even though it's a little crazy to like care about them that much. (laughs) But it's fun. It's fun. Understand. Uh, Well, and that's a, look, that's a perfect segue because, you know, we're talking about uh, muscular women (laughs) and fish out of water. (laughs) And, you know, that's been, there've been those elements in your Captain Marvel run. And yes. we got to 50 right. and it was a, you know, a bittersweet moment uh, for, for yeah. some of us because this run has just been uh, so fun. And, and I've, you know, from like personal experience, I've been a, a fan of the character. I've been a fan of Carol for a long time and Good. seeing someone we, we do a, our, our podcast comic book nation and, and we have this, you know, comic segment and it's introducing comics uh, to not just, you know, one of my co-hosts is really new to comics and started mm-hmm. the comics. And I was like, look, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to I'm going to like I, I just was like, I'm going to throw Captain Marvel in there one time. Right. Because we we change them up every <laughs> week. And I was like, I'm going to throw them in there and see if like, you know, Janelle, like see what she thinks. And see. And I picked like a good like starting point, whatever. <laughs> and then she was like, oh, my God, this is like, oh, because she's never really been like she didn't really gravitate to like the movie yet. Right. And yeah, so she right, was right. just like, I don't. Like, why do you love this? Why do yeah. you love this character? What did like, what did you give her? I'm curious. From my run um, or from somewhere else? From no, it was like your run. Kelly Sue's. Uh, oh, from mine. It was it was your run, and it was I want to say, um, oh, I know exactly. No, it was uh, Doctor Strange. It was the oh, run. It was the magic run. The magic run. And she's a huge Doctor Strange fan, so I oh, thought, okay, ma- she good, loves magic. Yeah, yeah I was like, yeah. let's let's yeah. put that in there, and she was like. <laughs> hooked right so she went i I want those even if we don't read them like for the show i want those and so i (laughs) was like okay (laughs) so i got her on and then it got to the point where we now cover it every month like there's always if there's a new issue me and her cover it because she's so excited to talk about it she's not even an x-men fan that's That's been the longest thing and she loved the team up so it's been like it's been cool to kind of see someone really find like a love for a character and a supporting cast and then also have someone that it's it's been awesome. So I I think the run has had, you know, such a, such a big effect and and we've had such new characters and supporting cast. So for 50, you know, there's a lot, you bring a lot of things full circle. Um, Yeah. So kind of looking at a broad thing, like how long kind of in the back of your brain did you have this particular ending set in mind? I knew for a while, I knew before we went into the brood arc that I wanted to do some kind of party or function or event or something that was so we'd have an excuse to sort of draw everyone together. I didn't really know what it was going to be about beyond that party atmosphere. And I was very much struggling with whatever the action piece should be because because we're not tying tightly to what comes next beyond sort of, you know, opening up the ground to be like, okay, where do you guys want to go? There wasn't anything where I could, you know, you know, I'm so used to hooking into another story that, you know, often the end of an arc also includes the setup for a new arc. And so I'm like, I don't know what this action piece and for a long time, it really, screwed me up about what that issue should be about because I kept looking for this action moment. And finally I was like, it's not having an action. I mean, like it has a tiny one with her and L'Oreal, but like anything I tried to create, it just felt like a waste of page time to shoot photon blasts. And, (laughs) and, and you, because of the sort of formula of superhero comics of, of, month to month superhero comics, you know, you feel very compelled to do that action piece. 
But the more I thought about it, I was like, it's not what anyone is going to be looking for or wanting here. What they want are these, um, they want to see these other characters. They want this emotional closure. And then when I realized that in order to get that, part of it was going to need to be that Schrodinger's room and Wanda and sort of Carol really sort of facing herself and her interior question she was having that sort of snapped it all into place and made the rest of it work. Um, I really painted myself into a corner when we started the brood arc. I wasn't sure binary was going to die. I was pretty sure I knew (laughs) Let's rephrase. I knew that's what I needed to do. I didn't want to do it. And so there were times when I tried to talk myself out of it. I almost tried to talk Sarah out of it one time. And I think Sarah would have let me get away with talking us out of it. Like she's a very supportive editor. And I feel like when you get to 50, they become more supportive. They just are like, listen, you've done this thing where I just want to help you get to the end. But in the end, I did feel like it was the right thing to do. But I felt like I really screwed myself because here now I have this party and no one wanted to go to a party. Like it was so sad coming out of 49. But it was one of those happy accidents where instead it was really a way to like focus and clarify what's going on with her and why she's struggling with these things and sort of to hone in on not only her confronting these things within herself, but also her looking around and seeing that she has built an incredible web around her of people who care about her and support her. And like, that's how you get through it. You know, that's how you get by through binary. It's not through white knuckling it through your alcoholism and through meetings and whatever. It's through having people who genuinely care about you and cared about her and like will help you like sometimes you need people to help you it's just a fact it's like how it works and good it makes us connect to each other it makes us care about each other people are not islands unto themselves even captain marvels so that was all the stuff i wanted to talk about and fortunately uh i had um javier pina and david lopez uh, making every panel so beautiful that it didn't matter that we had almost no punching. <laughs> <laughs> and the punching that is there is great. It's, it's beautiful. Just, you know, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just awesome. But I, I love as a, as a forever fan of, of Jess and Carol together yeah. uh, as friends, the stuff between them and, and strange and like all that's <laughs> just so fun. And it's just, you know, captures so much of like their friendship and, um, <laughs> If it's I could, if I Go could ahead. write a weird, strange Marvel Spider book, <laughs> I would definitely like. You know, I felt like I'd sort of burn myself out on Carol as a solo. Not that I burn myself out, but just I'd said what I needed to say yeah. with her, and like I didn't want to keep spinning our wheels. I, I wanted to give someone else a chance to to build something with her, but at, and and some of that is it's not boredom exactly it's just you find yourself running into a wall where you're like well i've already done something that thematically is the same as that so like why would i go there again but if you gave me a weird traveling doctor strange captain marvel spider woman book i would write the crap out of that for sure it was they're (laughs) they're super fun on the page together i mean it's like oil and water and i don't know whatever doesn't go with either of those things it's very fun they're just so great. And, um, you know, it's funny, you mentioned, you know, binary, because at at one point, you know, I really thought there would be some sort of like, some sort of hint that like, oh, I saw you can come back. I, I, I saw I, your review. Was that was that, yes, was that, was that, was that what it. you were talking about? And I read it and I was like, <laughs> I went in just thinking like, there's got to be something, you know, because that well, was gut that that gutted me. And then I went, OK, but that's not that's the thing we harp on comics for all the time yeah, is that they I, trivialize death and yes. that doesn't make it, it doesn't have an impact if I know yeah. Yeah. five days from now they're coming back. So I went, yeah. it's probably not. It's actually the right yeah. call and it had more it, impact as a result. I mean, I appreciate that you thought about it a lot though, because I thought about it too. I mean, that was my struggle with not wanting to kill her. And I did think about, well, I could just bring her back. And then I was like, but then that blunts everything we've been through if i just bring her back that said i think the hints are there that she could come back the hints are just in 49 not in 50 right and they're for someone else to 
decide or not decide to revisit at some point or maybe me you know in five years i don't know um but i mean i did try to do that a lot as far as laying groundwork for stuff i mean you know you, you one of the hardest things about creating a lasting character um and i think everyone knows this because the two characters that seem to sell no matter what also have the two best rogue galleries of any characters and that's batman and spider-man and so you need those rogues and carol's carol's is was i don't think it is anymore i think a lot of people have added to it since she became captain marvel especially but prior to that her her rogues gallery is pretty narrow it's pretty limited because she has changed so much you know i'm not saying iron man isn't more powerful than he was back then but like Carol used to run around and fly around and punch stuff. And now she can like reignite suns. And (laughs) like, I mean, she's like a, she's really leveled up. And so it doesn't make sense for her to fight Deathbird anymore, unless Deathbird comes with an entire Shi'ar army. Okay. Now we're talking, but like, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, so it was really important to sort of build her up a little bit, but there's also a thing in a long run where you don't want to be, you want to keep creating new stuff and building stuff up. You don't just want to keep returning to what you did. I mean, right. we returned to Vox Supreme because we felt there was really a good story there. And we felt coming back to him helps solidify, him as a a, a rogue we sort of came back to ove in sort of a backwards way by doing that modern story um we probably if i'd kept going we probably would have come back to star again too just to like reinforce him as recurring bad guys who she's going to keep having to deal with right um but like honestly if i'd gotten a chance if i if we'd done more after brood i probably would have there is a one of my only regrets with the title is that psalm is out there from the first arc like their ally oh, that's the yeah. son of son of machismo or a nuclear man and he's sort of lost and especially because of the themes of the final issue and her trying to like talk about being more responsible cleaning up more community more all that stuff um it feels particularly bad that he's just lost out there. So that's a story I would have liked to have tell told if we got there, but it was also hard. Just um, there was sort of a psychological barrier to doing that because while I love that arc, it's probably one of our least popular arcs. I don't know if that's just because people weren't reading, really? you know, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, when people talk about it to me, they rarely mention that one. They talk about, they talk about last Avenger, or they talk about the stuff with Star sometimes. Um, a lot of people love the Ove with the future arc, stuff like that. So I almost never hear about the Nuclear Man arc, even though I really love that sort of Mad Maxi fun stuff. I mean, I don't think it's a bad start. I just, it's hard to go back to pick up a plot point when you don't feel like the fans are clamoring for it. You know, like, gotcha. yeah. it's, it's, it's just a, you just got to make a choice. Yeah. So. Well, and I want to get to um, Black Cloak because I'm supremely enjoying that. Um, but yeah. one last thing on, on Cat Moral, because y- you kind of touched on it. You were when you said like going back to thematic, you know, going back to things that maybe you've already done or touched on or that yeah. kind of thing. And, you know, when I first saw Rogue um, yeah. kind of be a proponent, like a, a, a factor in the series kind of way, way back, I was a little like oh like i because i mostly because i trusted you so i was like oh okay she'll (laughs) she'll be she'll be great in the first arc or in the brood arc in the first arc um, oh yeah because rogue is such a like it's so important to to carol in a a bevy of ways but also like that can so easily turn into kind of going back over it it Mm, can kind of be like replaying trauma and and going that so i was like okay i hope like that's not exactly where we go and then seeing like what happens there and mm-hmm. i was like oh okay this is this is cool and then i was like i was bought in right so then when we <laughs> later on you know she becomes a factor and then the the whole x-men arc yeah that really feels like and, and there's a lot of stuff in 50 that feels like it's kind of coming full circle and closing things but it yeah. really feels like now leaving from here that is 
it, it's always felt like an open wound. Like it, yeah. like there's closure, but like, it's always kind of still been like, there's still yeah. stuff. And now it really feels like it's, it's a close, like it's closed. It, Listen, it feels I, like there's, a- I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. Cause like, that's how I feel too. I mean, I think you can kick it open if you need to, if store it future story, people need to, I think it's pretty easy to put them on opposite sides. Again, if you feel you have to do that mystique being the number one, leading factor of oh hey it's very easy to throw things around with this and and undo or disrupt this good thing we've built but i'm really glad you say that because that was certainly the intention the intention was with bringing rogue in to have them really work together and clean it up and like reach a new understanding so that rogue really like carol telling rogue in no uncertain terms listen we're good you're a good hero and we're good. You've changed. I see it, you know, and like have that moment. But just because they've had that moment, it doesn't mean there are people who can hug, you know? And so having her take some of that power and pain and like Carol being willing to share the burden with Rogue and Rogue wanting to take it, I felt like was a real level up in where they are and who they are and i mean yeah i mean that hug was everything to me i know that not everybody feels the same way but i feel like we earned it pretty well and it's really i'm really grateful to hear you say it no yeah i i love that and so now i'll just be like you know looking at any other thing and be like i don't know don't ruin a good thing (laughs) <laughs> the worst yeah the worst um, i do know how that goes for sure <laughs> and it's it's funny because then you move to black cloak and it's completely <laughs> like it it's just completely different and yet it still has you know essex and pax are like become have become two just like favorite you know if i look at like favorite detective duos you know they're just oh so my fun God. um they're just so fun and i just love the banter between them and you know, then also just the artwork is is stunning. Yeah. I love the art style. Um, what kind of prompted the idea to kind of jump into really a in a lot of ways kind of a mystery murder thriller, you know, detective story? I just love detective stories. I mean, I've only gotten to do them a little bit in comics, Jessica Jones, and in a slightly different way, you know, the Hawkeye stuff has got a PI angle. Um but yeah, I just like detective stories. I like I like it in my life and I like it in my comics. Like, I mean, I seek out detective stories all the time. I think they're really compelling. I love detectives. I I like cops much less than I used to. I don't know that I was ever a big fan of cops, but detectives always seem different to me than cops. Um, maybe it's just because the stories we choose to focus on, it's always this brilliant or lonely or beleaguered detective like who's definitely trying to do the right thing and so it's easier to see them like in that frame but um uh i so you know a lot of people are like why this detective thing with a fantasy with the sci-fi and i'm like that's just all my favorite things like why wouldn't i smash them together and see what you get i'm always interested in that uh i really had to argue with uh, my editor alana a million years ago when we were doing jessica jones i wanted to put elsa bloodstone in the first arc (laughs) and she was like i don't really get it she's like elsa doesn't really fit in here i was like you're first of all you're wrong (laughs) i was like the entire point of jessica jones is all of the marvel (laughs) universe can fit in jessica jones world that's the world she lives in that's what makes her interesting as a detective is or it's one of the things that makes her interesting is that she's operating in the marvel universe like can you imagine i was like so she should come into contact with everything including sort of x-rated looking monster hunters who you know hit like to hit things with electric guitars and shit like of course we should be doing that and um i don't know if she 100 percent agreed with me but i do feel like at least once she was like you're right it works and i was like yes <laughs> god damn right it does <laughs> I was like why would i was like the very fact that you think she doesn't fit is what makes it interesting to me like you know i always see people um sort of casting their favorite team or what would be the greatest team in a comic or whatever. And the problem I see over and over again is people all pick things that go together. You don't want things that go together. You want things that push against each other. You don't want 
five people that all have the same sense of humor and the same kind of powers. You want oil and water. Water and water is not interesting. Oil and oil is not interesting. Oil and water, you suddenly get something like you need those things. It's why when you look at Buffy the Vampire Slayer, they always have a a truth teller character who's in there who's not one of the friends, whether it's Cordelia or Spike or someone else. You need that disruptive person. And it's part of why, even though I love Carol and Rhodey together and I had no intention of breaking them up, when we did end up breaking them up and she briefly hooked up with Dr. Strange, it was hard to let go of that because they're not people who should be together in a relationship, but they are fun to write together in a relationship because there's a lot of natural conflict and not seeing things the same way whereas she and Rhodey really <laughs> see things the same way and so they just sort of get along and it's cute and it's fun but it often doesn't have that sort of spark that right. as a writer you're like oh yeah that's let's, let's have that so and that doesn't always happen I mean you know Essex and Pax they're they've got a little banter you're right but they're pretty on the same page mm-hmm. And I think you'll see by issue six, that's sort of, that's sort of purposeful because we really want you to connect to that relationship. Um, Oh God, don't break my heart. Because maybe. (laughs) Oh God, don't break it. Well, that's why. I mean, I mean, let me, you have to know something's coming with six, right? I mean, we've been building pretty intensely. And in five, it's so good when like we get to see like their first, moment yeah. you know when they're partners and you know it's just I, been i know it's it's been too happy yeah <laughs> it's been yeah. too happy but i yeah. also love that the it's so funny that you mentioned like some people talking about the mix of yeah you know, sci-fi elements and fantasy elements and into this because that's because we've all seen detective stories yeah. And we've all seen I'm a huge like Law and Order fan. I watch the Texas stories yeah, all the time. Like same. and and 24 hours a day on those TNT marathons or whatever. <laughs> I mean, and, look, if you get stuck in one of those, you're not getting out for no, hours. Oh, no, yeah. I mean and so they're very all... clever about how they roll them together. <laughs> <laughs> and we've all seen them. And while I yeah. love them, it's it's great to find unique ways to kind of make them different. And here, I mean, you know, she's sprouting yeah. wings and yeah. <laughs> she's trying to worry about like this history and how that affects her mom and so there's all this intrigue outside yeah. of and okay uh, where was the idea to make the mermaids are so distinctly <laughs> different here especially it's so funny that we have like little mermaid playing <laughs> in theaters right now i know right where was the idea for the mermaids and how like distinct they are here compared to other versions i, I just think i just think it's more interesting like because think about it what do you eat like you know it doesn't really make a lot of sense that they just look like beautiful human women or men on the top like it doesn't make any sense for the way they live for how they would live like if they were actual creatures and so we decided to play with sort of on the surface very magical beautiful intriguing almost like a siren vibe that could easily lead you to your death because you're like oh my god look how beautiful it is and then yeah it's sort of a horror show inside which is a lot of things and which also is a lot of things that just eat other things and in which I include us like you know especially when you're dealing like a world building um you know this sort of fantasy sci-fi vibe you've got all these creatures they all eat different things and some of them eat each other or would eat you if they weren't all trying to get together in like a civilized sort of structure and so you know you want to feel that monstrousness quote unquote but you also want to feel it as matter of fact right because it's not really monstrous it's just what that is right it's just their yes. their nature and they're like it's how Which they're, I made, think like is, they're made that way <laughs> right and this is a lot of where monstrous stuff comes from is the unknown right a, a thing appears scary to us when we don't understand it right. or when we can't make sense of how it fits in our world and so like it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that the mermaids would just be beautiful idyllic no 
they what do they eat well they eat us and so you know don't go in there with them because they'll <laughs> eat you <laughs> don't go into the lagoon um I've, I've already kept you uh too long so my <laughs> my apologies no no um, i'm me talking too much uh this is no this is great um before we go though uh you've got so you got to tease your new series uh cole uh, in yes. the in the last issue what can you kind of tease about about that and and what that vibe is so the call is me and maddie adiulius who people know is like an incredible incredible very realistic style so completely different than what meredith and i are doing over in black cloak um maddie is he he and i did jessica jones together we did two arcs of jessica jones he's done a bunch of other gorgeous stuff and covers but so the call is sort of a it's sort of like a grown-up Goonies vibe, like the high school. So it's it's five friends, five best friends sort of going on a day trip to this famous rock in their area that's in the water, like a like a haystack type of rock. Um on in in the summer before they're basically gonna go their separate ways. They're going under the guise of shooting a short film. But one of them has lied about what they're doing. And I can't really say anything more than that, except for that. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> these poor kids, these poor kids. Um, I love them so much and they're really going through it. Um, it's a very weird book. It's hard to talk about. It's hard to talk about vaguely. Um it's a mini, I will say it's a mini series. So it's five issues. It has a definitive end that sets up for more, which I hope will be very popular and that will do. Um, I think it's a really cool book. I think people should really pay attention. There are a lot of clues in Mattia's really beautiful, super detailed art. So like there are a lot of times when I'm really pulling back on the words because if you look at the pictures you can learn all you need to learn and so i would advise people like the first half of the book barely has any dialogue of, of issue one um but there's a lot to learn in there is what i'll say to, when does that uh, hit that's the vague hit oh um august 8th august oh, wow. 8th oh, right around the corner awesome yes and i should say that black cloak actually black cloak issue six was supposed to be later this month but we actually had to move it back uh, I just put that on my sub stack today. It's going to be the first week of August. So Black Cloak 6 will come out and then the call. The Black Cloak 6 is late because mostly because we added pages. It's 33 pages of story. So oh. we nearly doubled the size and that caused a problem. But um, nobody should get mad at Meredith. She's an absolute machine. It was my fault. We were running behind and we probably could have accounted for the additional pages if we hadn't been running but if i hadn't been running behind so anyway so look for those both in august and then birds of praise first week of september so man yeah so much and have a busy <laughs> month <laughs> well uh i sincerely appreciate the time and uh you know all the best success on everything i cannot wait uh to read all of those i can't read <laughs> I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat now especially more for black Thank cloak you. uh Thank but you. also birds and uh We'll definitely be checking out the coal. And uh, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. 